Hey everybody, Ron Roy here, and today I want to showcase my farming strategies that I've been using in the Necropolis. You can get from 10 to 20 divines just running that without almost all kind of investment. You will just need two basic scarabs for one chaos and two chaoses for the map craft. If your build can handle the pressure, it can be very profitable for you. And there's a possibility for big drops as well, since you can get some scarabs that can cost up to 10 divines. I think that strategy right now is one of the most efficient ones to get a lot of scarabs. And it should be pretty easy to use. Let's go and break it down a little. It's mostly based around rogue giants, and rogue giants are pretty much accessible with a new scarab added that leak, Anarchy Scarab of Judgentification. That way, all rogue exiles in Iraq have 30% chance to be replaced with a rogue giant. Rogue giant is just like a big and um, bulky rogue exile. And when you will kill it, first off, you, it is dropping items. And second, it's kind of falling off for two smaller rogue giants. And two smaller rogue giants, when you are killing them, they're pretty much falling off for two normal rogue exiles, while dropping items as well. That's pretty much a huge amount, and uh, you can get 7 times the drops just with that scarab alone. And you can get like 4 additional rogue exiles from basic anarchy scarab, and from basic map craft device that costs only 2 chaoses, you can get 3 more additional rogue exiles. That way you have 7 rogue exiles guaranteed every map. Let's look at the atlas tree in terms of what I can showcase. In the Atlas tree, the most important note here that pretty much enables the whole strategy is significant troughs. That way, unique monsters in your map have 200% increased chance to drop scarabs. And, well, all rogue exiles are unique monsters. That way, you will have a lot of rogue exiles, you can get a lot of unique monsters, and you can pretty much kill them and get your scarabs. On top of that, you can also use the Rukus, which will give you 8% chance to contain 20 additional rogue exiles which is huge. And you can stack a lot of basic nodes, pretty much following rogue exiles, chance for additional ones, and chance for rogue exiles to have additional rewards as a rogue trader right here. On top of that, we are going to use Maven for destructive play, because every map boss that you're encountering is pretty much a unique monster. That way when Maven will summon three additional Atlas bosses and one boss that you already have, it will be four, and all of them will drop scarabs as well. On top of that, you can get Conqueror Conquerors for increased chance to, to drop a Conqueror map, you can get Remnants of the Past for Elder Guardian and Shaper Guardian maps, and you can get Vivid Memories for Synthesis maps. All of that together will make your bosses pretty profitable, so you need to just clear the map, kill all rogue exiles on your way, get the boss, uh, and pretty much go exit and go for another map. You also will get a lot of cool drops from Maven itself, because she still can provide a lot of nice awakening gems. On top of that, I recommend to use single or carabasses, because Reliquary scarabs are pretty expensive right now, and that's definitely recommended. You can also use crystalline carabasses, because Ancest scarabs are not completely expensive, but they are pretty stable, to be honest. And on top of that, Trepid carabasses could be pretty nice, because ambush scarabs are stable as well. So all of that together, together with amplified artifacts and a lot of chances such as skittering swarms, can help you a lot with getting a lot of scarabs, even the basic ones. So another thing that I want to talk about is possessing, and pretty much possessing spirits that can get your rogue exiles. You have exiled will right here. Rogue exiles in your maps are possessed by tormented spirit. It's a pretty cool buff in my opinion. However, it's not important to run the strategy. Please be aware, if you are taking exiled will, you are making your rogue exiles very rippy. You're, they're going to kill you from time to time, especially if your build is not crazy tanky. So you can run version without it. However, if you want to maximize the profit, you need to take Exile Will and you need to take Sins for additional rares possessed. And on top of that, Unrelenting Torment can help a lot, because 30% more quantity of items dropped from possessed monsters in your maps are just like a really cool buff. However, as I already mentioned, it's not really that important. 
If you feel like possessed, rogue exiles are just like too strong for you, they take too much time for you to kill or anything like that. You can pretty much just drop those nodes and play without them. I'm going to provide different kind of trees in the description so you can look one without it and one with it. That's pretty much how I look at that. So I tested both of versions and both of them are viable so you shouldn't over focus on that. So pretty much that's how you should set up your map. You need to use Anarchy Scarab, Anarchy Scarab of Jet Identification, and you need to use a map. I usually aim for 80 item quantity, which is just alright. You can use Scarab of Partnership on top of that, and don't forget the map craft because it's pretty important. It's also Maven, and it should work just fine. You don't need anything else. So that's a probably strongest point of that strategy. It's crazy low investment. You don't really need anything. You can also use Energy Scarab of Partnership, because that way you will have even more Rogue Exiles. However, it's not that important. If you can get one, it will work just perfectly for you, but it costs like 3 Chaosas, and if you want to keep a really low investment, you can just ignore that Scarab. It's not that important. Most of the time I've calculated my drop without Energy Scarab of Partnership. That way, just energy scare up, just scare up of gen identification, and map craft is used. So that's pretty much my loot breakdown. And the question how profitable is that, just for example. So I've been running that strategy for one hour, and here is my stash tab that I can showcase. The most important item that drop is divination scare up of completion. That item alone costs about 9, maybe 10 divines right now. It's really expensive. However, even if I will move it from the stash tab, I still made about 10 divines just based on crazy amount of basic scarabs, as you can see, that I dropped here. Second important drop is Divination Scarab of Curation. It costs about 2.5 up to 3 divines, and well, it provided a lot of value too. However, even if I will get rid of that, I still have 7 divines in that stash tab. So generally, a lot of maps from Maven at the end, a lot of basic scarabs. Some of them could be used by you, some of them could be used for like other people, and you can sell them. Also, three Crescent Splinters, because, well, I did Maven a few times in the process, and I dropped Awakened Swift Affliction Support. It's not crazy, it's like 70 Chaosas, but it's still pretty nice bonus. So here's pretty much a breakdown from Wealthy Exiles that showcase my stash tabs that I used to stash all my loot. As you can see, Divination Scarab of Completion is 9 and 5 um, Divines, and Divination Scarab of Curation is I already mentioned, like 2 Divines right here. On top of that, I have a lot of cool bonuses, and a lot of basic Scarabs, which are not really costing a lot, but I have many, many of them dropped, and that way it can provide a lot of value. So, it's 18 divines already with Divination Scarab of Completion. Without it, it will be 10 divines. So if you're not lucky and it, like never dropped, that's fine. You're still making about 10 divines per hour, which in my opinion is pretty awesome. And even if you will get rid of Divination Scarab of Creation, two last divines, it's about 8 divines in just loot by itself. It's a wealthy exile, so it's not perfect. You can take it with a little grain of salt and it could move a little in terms of prices, however, as you can see, it can provide a lot of value by itself. You can also drop a few Divination Scarab of Completion, and it will make you much more rich in just one go. So, on top of that, there's chances to get big drops. Pretty much Rogue Exiles can drop Divination cards, so if you're going to farm, for example, Crimson Temple or Defiled Cathedral right now, you can get a lot of different Divination cards up to Apothecary. They're definitely not the best for farming divination cards, but there are still chances because you have a lot of quantity on them. On top of that, the rogue exiles pretty much dropping unique items pretty well. You can get everything up from basic trash to heat shiver, calendar touch, or even mage blood itself. So there are chances for it, and upside is pretty high on that. If you are farming some decent map in particular. So, this is a moment when I need to explain why I still think that strategy shouldn't be like perfect for everybody. The issue is, well, rogue exiles are pretty strong, to be honest. 
especially if you are using the tormented version, but even without the torment, they pack a lot of punch. Especially the giants, if you have like three giants on top of each other, they are starting to swarm in you in. If your build is not tanky enough, you could die there. So please consider it and look what your build can pretty much do, if you can farm it or not. However, if your build can handle it, I think it's one of the best strategies to farm scarabs right now, because it can provide a crazy, just crazy amount of profit and for like almost no investment, which is pretty cool. So that's been my strategy for Rogue Exile Giants, which can bring you a pretty nice profit if your character can handle it. Thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe for more RPG content, and see you next time.